Utah Jazz select John Stockton of Gonzaga University. <laughs> If you were starting a franchise today, who's your number one pick out of all the players in the NBA? Well, I'll tell you, you won't believe this, but I like Johnny Stockton. I think he's the most complete person in his position. But Magic Johnson is still my favorite because he's eight inches bigger. <laughs> John Stockton. One of the smartest players I ever played against. So very too. crafty. Me very too. crafty with the ball. Uh, would always watch the defense, what they were going to do. And if they made a mistake, the ball was delivered right on, right on the money. You, you made some headlines today. Good. Because you said that John Stockton was more difficult to defend than Michael Jordan. Blasphemy Ooh. to me. And you how, you have to defend yourself because I'm how often do you really guard Michael Jordan? Man, listen. If I can guard Michael Jordan one game and guard him to the fullest, I had to play John Stockton almost 13 times a year. Even if we played him six times in a regular season and then um, go a game sevens in the playoffs, he was a guy who was uh, fundamentally sound. He would set picks. He would do the right thing. He would shoot 12 times, uh, make 10, he would, and all that. You, he was just he great. He wasn't tougher you than just, Jordan. Yes, he was. You oh, just didn't. Yes, he was. Gary, you guys didn't Gary. play against him. I did. Gary, be honest. I don't, I'm I don't off the set. I, I played I against him. Gary, well, look, he was a tough. Let, let, me, let me ask you. Forget you just, the clock for a second. Let me ask you this seriously, because when you say that, people are going to be like, are you joking me? And they did today. A lot of people. Right, I know. A lot of people. And I got to get enough time to explain Not just based off the number of times that you saw John Stockton, but you're saying that he was more fundamentally sound than Michael Jordan. We were more athletic than he was. We were mad because he said picks and said he was dirty. If a guy comes and shoots 12 times, makes nine of them, shoots eight free throws and makes seven of them, that's 20-something points and have 15 assists and four steals a game and works out with Carl Malone and can do it on a continuous basis, and I have to play against him nine, seven and nine times a year, that is hard Gary, to call. No, I Gary, believe that. Gary, let's be honest. You just didn't like playing him because he, no. he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't talk back to you. True, that's true. That's true. That's a, that's a thing, too. He wouldn't talk back to me. With Michael Jordan, he's a competitor. He's going to go back at me. That is easier for me to deny him the ball and do a lot of things. Wow. Then he gave you 50. Oh. He didn't give me 50. You got to read your, get your stats right, baby. And do your homework. Get your homework. Do your homework. If you were starting a team with everybody on the Dream Team, who would you start with? If I was starting a team with everybody on the Dream Team. And you were playing with that guy. And I was playing with that guy. I would have to come on, Dan. Really, you think you're going to get me with that? I would have to start my team with John Stockton. Okay, oh. do, do, do you know what, Dan? I like how you kind of slid that in, <laughs> but you can't get me with that. You can't get me with that. I'm, look, I'm, I'm too old for okay, those kind Carl, of Okay, Carl. Carl, I'm taking Stockton out of the the question. You didn't say that. I did you it right now, that. Carl. Carl, it's my show. It's your show. But look, you tried to set me up. You did not say you take a charge. Okay. okay. I now tried to take a, a charge. I tried to take a charge. Stockton's out of it. Let me turn the question around a little bit now and say, who's today is John Stockton? Hmm. I think as long as he's playing, Steve Nash Steve is Nash, as close Nash. as you're going to get to what John Stockton was about. I mean, the consistency in terms of shooting the basketball. Steve is one of the game's greatest shooters of all time. John Stockton consistently a 50% shooter. A playmaker, an assist maker, but I mean, I don't see that. You don't think I don't, as see, much only, because of because of the offensive end of the ball. I, I think because of the willingness to score. I think John Stockton to me played free throw line in, like he really penetrated the basketball free throw line in. Where Steve Nash goes plays free throw line out. He's really a three point shooter. Well, now you're going to go into system though, because one guy was locked into Jerry Sloan's half-court offense where it was he, he got run, select, paint, run selectively in advance with the pass, which is something that I think that's one of the biggest things that Steve and John share is the willingness as a point guard to advance right. I ball agree on with the that. pass and play. But their system... But I wouldn't play the, if, if I... If, if, like if, if, if... I don't know, Steve, Isaiah, if you were guarding them. My first thing would be make Nash drive. My thing with Stockton would be make him shoot from the outside. So I would think of them... I would be playing them totally different. Like, I, would, I wouldn't want Steve Nash to be a jump shooter. I would say I want to get him in the lane. Or you'd say help if there was a pick and roll. Company. Oh, pick and roll. Help, help, help. <laughs> you know, I, I think, John, I, I've played, I played against John since I was 13 years old. And, you know, he's a, 
he's a much better outside shooter, much better with the basketball. And and when you're talking about, you know, Nash and Stockton, I just think from a a toughness standpoint, I, I don't I don't think there's a comparison. And I don't know if we have anybody in our game today with his type of toughness, uh, physically or mentally. And you know when you when you played against John, I mean you you had to bring your lunch. I mean yep. On the offensive side and the defensive side, because you know there, there was a toughness about him that he carried. That you know, I don't know if we have anybody in our game today that 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 really brings that that to the table. I, I would put Chris Paul in that conversation. I know they play differently and they they look different, and, and and Chris is much bigger. But John was one of the strongest guards in the league. I don't know if you guys felt that. Well, I, was, I got hit by one of them screens. Yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> but, but the toughness, the, the the competitiveness, I see a lot of that in Chris Paul and the, the point guard mentality. What's happened today, you guys know, but point guards are more looking to score. You got right. guys who really want to score. John was always looking to pass. I always feel like Chris Paul can score whenever he wants, but he's got a, a kind of an old school point guard mentality. But, you know, I, I always thought like... Um, you know, Stockton as a as a score. If if he was in this game today, oh, yeah. with mm -hmm. with no centers and no big, I, I I felt like you know he made Malone. I don't know if Malone would have been the type of player he was had he not had a Stockton. You, you know, and, yeah. and so and I felt numbers? and I felt and I felt like if if Malone's not in the way and you put them in this game today. I think Stockton in this game, you know, he can score the basketball easily, get to the basket, and be just as good as anybody playing. Hey, Jeff, talk to me then about playing against John in those early years. Um, Stockton and Malone, the, the uh, twosome, I said at the start, I would imagine that your feelings for John towards John changed significantly from opponent to teammate. What about as an opponent? Couldn't stand him. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's one of those guys that when you went out there and played against, you knew it was a battle. Um, I think when you're undersized and... You're not expected to, you know, be one of these guys who gets all the calls. You learn to do little things. And John, John knew exactly how to get open, how to drive by you. Uh, I said for years that John was, even before I played with him, he was the best I've ever seen at getting over a pick and roll, uh, a screen. I was terrible at it. Now, we used to laugh in, uh, in Phoenix with Kevin Johnson. So I never seen a guy, when a guy goes to set a pick, his ability to get over that pick was better than anybody I've ever seen. And that was something I don't, I'm not sure it's ever been talked about, but uh, that was one thing I know. Best point guard to ever play the game is who? Oh, John Stockton, Magic oh. Johnson. I mean, th those, are the, those, those two are the best to probably ever play it. What, what did Stockton do better than you? Um, he, I think he had like three thousand. He set the table. He, <laughs> I think he had five thousand more assists than I did. <laughs> okay, all right. right. And steals. I mean, uh, look, when you look at those records, it's just it's it's amazing. And I, I just don't think he gets the due that he deserves. Well, he played in Utah. That's why. Well, yes, I, I that's that's fine. But still, I think sometimes he's left out of the mix of you know great point guards great great point guards and and we forget to sometimes mention him all right is he going to be your if i got your all-time starting five is john stockton your point guard um yes i should if i'm the coach i would i, I would i could i could easily watch the game then yes you see why john stock is one of the five best players i ever played against this kid is one of the greatest players to ever play in this game he's a big play player i've always said i think john stockton is the perfect point guard Watching his career in the NBA, there's never been a guy, a point guard, a pure point guard, who made better basketball decisions with the ball, ever. I never thought of him as a pass-first point guard. I thought of him as a guy who was taking the best opportunity every time. John Stockton sends the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals. The thing that, that, that amazes me more about John Stockton than anything else was his durability. He was tough. His, his ability to play defense came from his ability to, to know what the team was doing. Crossover dribble from the weak side. John Stockton strips it. He's a guy who played chess while other guys were playing chess. To me, he was Bobby Fischer of basketball. When you played against him, you had to outthink him. It's like chess playing against him. 
you know. It wasn't like you're going out there, we're going to be the quickest. No, this is chess. This is a long 48-minute game that you had to think about every move, every possession you had to make. I mean, obviously, the, the greatest assist man ever to play in the game. Uh, John was just boom, boom, hit you right here when you need to catch it, you knock it in. And he was very simple. He simplified. And that's why Jerry Sloan loved it. He grabbed Stockton uh, out of Gonzaga. I mean, it was huge. Nobody knew who Stockton was, uh, but you immediately knew because they had a guy on that team, Ricky Green, who was a very good point guard at the time. And John Stockton eventually moved him out. And nobody really foresaw that happen. I hated John Stockton. He's probably the guy who I hated guarding the most because most guys you guard, you're trying to stop from scoring. With John, you had to try to stop him from passing. And the other thing that he probably was the best I've ever seen, even to this day, best screening guard in the history of our game. I, we, we see all the records with the assists and the steals, and, and that stuff was incredible and his longevity. But he had a mean streak in him, and that guy would deliver blows with his ability to set screens unlike anybody you've ever seen. The thing that I always remember about Stockton, I don't know how many, I think I played like two years against him before he retired. The first three, four years, me, I'm like, Jack, I'm strong. I'm like, nah, ain't nobody like, John Stockton might have been one of the strongest dudes. He set a back screen on me one time, and you couldn't have told me it wasn't Carl Malone or somebody setting that screen. He set the hardest screens I had ever witnessed to that point. And I could like for real. One time he said he, he rung my bell. I was like, oh, I got up like this was John Stockton just hit me like this? Like what? I was like, yo, this dude is the strongest little dude ever. Well, when you think of John Stockton, you automatically think of assists and steals, obviously, but you had to play against him <laughs> with all those great Utah teams. What do you remember? how tough he was, how competitive he was, and how relentless. They ran a cross-screen play for Carl Malone, where John Stockton would, would hit, swing it to the wing, and he'd make that UCLA cutoff, and he'd set that cross-screen. And me guarding Carl Malone, John would always set the pick, and you knew the play was coming when they ran auto. So you knew this pick was coming, and John would try to get body to body on those screens and pick you off. So what I started doing, and what teams, guys started doing, is getting big with their elbows. And when John would come set that screen, we start moving, and we would try to purposely hit him from his chest up to his neck to punish him, to stop him from setting those screens. But in all the years that I've hit him, Matt, from setting those screens, one, mm. he never stopped setting them. Two, he set them even harder. And three, he never complained because he understood that was part of the game. He understood as a defender guarding Carl Malone, I had to do what I had to do to get over that screen. And as a guy setting the screen to get Carl open, he had to do what he had to do and take that punishment. You know, from the outside, you watch those great jazz teams and the offense they ran, and you think of John Stockton, you certainly think of his vision and his playmaking, his ability to shoot the basketball. But I've heard from so many players of that era how physically strong he was for his size. Yeah, man. You know, back then, you could hand check. And he and Derek Harper had that vice grip claw. And when they would put that hand on young guys, they would steer them and, and, and move them in a direction in the places on the court they wanted them to go. And John Stockton was so good at it. That what made him a great defender because he was so strong, he could move you and just give you that little nudge to get you off balance to keep you from going where you want to go. And then his ability to make big shots. You know, he understood that, the, that they had to get the ball to Carl Malone and other guys. But in the fourth quarter, when Carl was getting doubled and they kick it out to John, he faked that swing pass from the top and started knocking down shots up there. So he was a timely shooter, a tough defender, and then there's just a great facilitator. Is John Stockton dirty to you? John Stockton was one of the toughest guys I ever played against there. Uh, we had a series on uh, the playoffs. It was our first series in Sacramento. And uh, we were playing against Utah, great Carl Malone and Stockton, and I felt that our team was in awe of them. Uh, we were younger. And so I told Coach uh, Adam before the game, I said, uh, on the first play of the game, I'm going to lay Stockton's ass out. <laughs> and Coach said, are you sure? I said, yeah. I said, trust me, Coach. It's the first game. We just need to do it. Like, you know, they're, they're prepared for everything that's coming. They don't expect it. I lay him out on the screen. I'm talking about I lay him out one of the best screens I ever did. Got my shoulder kind of in that head area, too, to kind of make it a little dirty. He pops up off the ground. Pats me on the butt and says, "Nice screen." <laughs> you, you know, do you, do you know how uh, demoralizing that is? You, you know what I mean. So yeah, he's 
he was one of the toughest guys, and I loved it, too. After that game, we would play him in the playoffs, and I would make rookies wait on the bus, and I would say, watch the baddest man in the world pull up. And they're like, what do you mean? They think I'm going to talk about, like, his cars and all this. And John Stockton would come to the game, literally, in a minivan, <laughs> pop his kids out, come in there, and bust us up. So, yeah, he's a bad man. He's, wherever he is right now, he's still a bad man. <laughs> And he would show up, and he would probably have a plaid shirt on and, you know, jeans or something. His hair parted neatly on the side. Looked, he'd be so unassuming. He'd be a guy that they'd probably check his ID in other arenas. Oh, yeah. You even thought he was, uh, you know, coming straight out of Catholic Church. <laughs> one of the kids up there, you know, lighting the candles. Or, or you thought, yeah, he was the valet. You definitely didn't think he was as bad a man as he was, but he knew that. And he, he knew that being unassuming was part of, was part of his swagger. So he knew that and he used that to his advantage too. John is the ultimate gym rat. And he's not doing it for the paycheck. He's doing it for the love of the game. He is tenacious. He, he, he has a problem with losing. Anything he does, he does well. It's one of those guys, every team wants a guy like John Stockton. You never know the guy was a superstar, the way he carries himself. And I like that. He's very unimposing. When you meet John Stockton, he's like somebody's little brother. He's never looked like a basketball player, but the shorty shorts, I know he used to hate this. I used to call him John Boy because he reminded me of in that uh, TV series uh, uh, of the Waltons. I remember my uh, rookie year and uh, actually seeing him at the NBA All-Star game, and I had played against him already. However, when you see him, he doesn't look like a basketball player. So he's walking through the hotel, and he had a suit on. And he looks like an insurance salesman. And then the second time I see him later on, he says, hey, Kenny, how you doing? And I look, I thought it was a fan because of his size and his stature. But on the court, you know who he is, you know what he does, and he does it better than anyone who ever done it at the point guard position. When you talk about point guard, uh, the classic point guard that's John Stockton. John Stockton is a professional basketball player. And when I say that, I mean that he is the guy who you would want your son to play basketball like. Well, he's the best point guard of all time. I mean, not only what he's been able to do at the peak of his career, but how he's been able to play with such consistency and longevity, it's amazing. The main thing about a point guard is he looks to dish before he looks to swish. Well, that's the heart and soul of his game because I associate that with the way the point guard position is played. You know, John comes over half court thinking, how am I going to set something up for one of the other four guys rather than thinking, what am I going to do for myself? You can't teach what John Stockton can see on the court under pressure. He not only can see everybody, but he remembers where they are. Taking a, a visual picture of where the guys are on the floor not having to look at a guy to make a play. Well, he can anticipate when guys are going to be open. And that's a, that's a sign of a great passer that can know when a guy is going to be open, know where he likes it, and deliver it there. When you watch players cut when Stockton has the ball, they've always got their hands up and their eyes on the ball because you never know when he's going to let it go. Stockton puts under this big one. He sees an opening and he's going to fire it at you. And, of course, that's where the... The old saying, know your customer, comes from uh, because, uh, you know, some guys uh, needed uh, room service passes, as we called them, uh, you know, like come over and hand the ball to you because uh, you're not ready to catch it. He's the all-time assist leader in steals, and, uh, you know, people don't really talk about the steals as much as the assists, but, you know, he plays both sides of the court, and uh, that's what makes him a complete player. For him to hold both records is a, a, an incredible achievement, and uh, those two records will probably be uh, there for a long time. His instincts as an offensive player, he converted those to defense, and he saw the passes before they were thrown. He anticipated what he would do, and so when the opponent did it, bingo, he had the ball and off he went. He's a good defender because he gets over those screens and picks with a lot of gusto. He doesn't allow guys to pick him off, and then if he has a mismatch, he doesn't allow a taller player to try to post him inside. So he's working diligently and relentlessly to get inside to stop the play. He doesn't go out there and, and, and play around with the game. He's very serious about it. He's a smart basketball player. You know, everybody say he's dirty, but I, I think that's wrong. I think that's that's not a statement for him. I think that they should just understand he goes out and play basketball the way he knows how to play hard. I tell people all the time, this to me has been like the greatest era of basketball. I got a chance to play against Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan. And you put John Stockton right in that group. The first time I met John was we both got cut from the Olympic team 
uh, in 84. We rode to the airport together. It was kind of weird because it was me, uh, Carl Malone, uh, Terry Porter. And you think like, wow. And then you see how his career turned out. You know, he didn't look like anything special. Um, just real quiet, really nice guy, and just kind of feeling his way around. Ricky Green was one of the first people that came and told me, he says, uh, Coach, he says, uh, this is a good one. And he said, he's something special. He was somebody who liked to play the game and, and was very tough in training camp and, and got right up in guys' faces and uh, gave Ricky Green all he could handle in practice every day. Played against him in an exhibition game uh, when I was with the Boston Celtics. And uh, I knew right then that Stockton was going to be good. Um, I had no idea he was going to be as good as he was. And I don't think anybody could have. There was never any question about his ability to play. The biggest question mark that we had was would he hold up? <laughs> and little did we know that he'd hold up as well as he has and played as long as he has. John Stockton was the reason that we played seven games. He kept his team poised. They were confident. They felt that they had a chance to really beat us. And we only won right at the end uh, in that uh, seventh game. That was the year that they really arrived as a team, and, and those two players became... Uh, the absolute anchors of, uh, of one of the greatest runs of a team in the history of the NBA. Well, I was sitting on the bench, so I got a good view of it. When it left his hands, I just got up and started walking to the locker room. I just knew. I mean, I knew the guy was going to make it because he's just ice. I knew it was in. Uh, that's the kind of player that he is. He was not going to be denied that moment. I always, like, resented Carl Malone for getting to play with a point guard that good. Because that's all you really want. If you're going to run the floor, like Carl, who's terrific, run the floor every play, you know you're going to get the ball. One of the great things about Carl Malone is that he might be the best running forward that has ever played the game. And one of the reasons he's such a great running forward is he plays with a point guard will always give the ball up. When you talk about greatness, you have to enter longevity in there, be able to keep your body uh, healthy and uh, to play for many, many years. And nobody's played longer at that position than John Stockton. You use the, the, the phrase freak of nature, I think would fit him well. Uh, nobody is supposed to be 40 plus years of age and still being able to do the things that he does. He can take the 24 year old and play against those guys and quickness means nothing. It's when you take that burst of speed how you come off a pick like John and uh, runs it with Carl. He just knows how to, to basically sucker those other players into doing what he wants them to do. And that's, uh, that's just being a smart player. It's good to watch him, you know, teach the young guys a few tricks because all the young guys can come in and run and jump and do all the fancy stuff. And, you know, at the end of the night, you know, he's five for seven with 12 assists and they can't figure out what happened. <laughs> he's just the ultimate point guard. I mean, it you know, you learn so much from him, you know, when you're, when you're playing against him. You know, he's very heady, smart. He's a basketball genius. In order to do it as long as he's done it and as good as he's done it, you have to be smarter than the next guy. So he's taken care of himself well over the years and, and not only physically but maintained his, his mental stamina as well. There were days when I just couldn't seem to get my focus going or wasn't feeling too good or my back hurt or whatever. You just go over and sit by John for a little bit, and all of a sudden you could get, you know, you could get yourself dialed back in pretty quickly. John has a has a great body. People don't realize, uh, you know, what a good build he has. He's a powerful man. For him to stay healthy and to stay fit and to be as uh, a great a player as he's been for so long, and to miss so few games and to play in the playoffs so many years, it's uh, he's, it's amazing. I mean, he's got to be one of the toughest competitors in all of sports, you know, in the history of all sports. 6'1", 170 pounds. If you asked him to go set a pick on Shaq, he had no problem with it. Whatever, whatever it took, you know, that seemed like to be his model. Whatever it took to win the game, I'll do it. I try to run him over when he tries it with me. Um, you know, he, he gets up onto you and uh, he get, gives you a good shot. Very few guards will go do that. Very few guards will go and sacrifice their body to get their teammate open. You know, they think, well, if I just bring the ball up and get it to the right person, I've done my job. John plays the complete game. John Stockton is tough. Well, I don't know if you can write the word uh, down and, and uh, describe uh, anybody else other than John Stockton when it comes to playing. He, he had a broken fibula, and uh, a lot of players, it would have been a way to cop out. I made the Olympic team, but I broke my leg or something. Uh, but he continued to compete. There are a lot of great players in this league, uh, but somehow they, they seem to get injured or miss games. And uh, John Stockton, you pretty much can pencil in 
82 games every year, and you know what you're going to get. It doesn't matter uh, if he's banged up, if he's sore, if he's hurt. You know he's going to be there. You know he's going to play the minutes, and you know he's going to produce. The mental part of it has been something that John has uh, absolutely surpassed everybody else in. He gets in the heads of the opponent. I think that through the years, you know, a lot of guys wonder, who is this guy that wears his pants a little bit shorter? Tough guy to compete against, a guy who uh, never backed down. It's a headache, you know, because, you know, it's not a night off. Uh, you know, he's going to bring it uh, when he's out there on the floor. And so, uh, you know, he plays hard. He loves the uh, competition. He loves to go against the, the best. Will he cheat to win? I don't think he'd cheat to win. Um, but I think he's going to take advantage of the rule. He's one of those guys that irritates you from the standpoint of the day after the season's over, he can go out and shoot 80 on the golf course, you know put a bat in his hands, he can start knocking balls over the, the fence. Honestly, he just simply wanted to play basketball and go home and, and be with his family, and, and it's a job like any other job from that standpoint. A guy that just got it done, never flashy. Choir boy with Mike Tyson's punch. Playing against John Stockton it would be like painting against Picasso. He's the best at it. I think he's a dying breed, especially at the point guard position. I think John's over the years has had the kind of respect that he's kind of set a standard for what the point guard position is all about. I don't think anyone, um, you know, will, will come along with that type of stamina and can do it, um, you know, with that type of perfection for, for this long. A guy who probably controlled a team and a game better than anybody I've ever seen. Very pesty, but, you know, uh, probably one of the greatest players that ever played the game in his position. That's on both ends of the court. So they talk about records that will never be broken. I think John's assist record will never be broken. I don't, I don't think there's a, a chance that will even happen. I have so much respect for this guy, his uh, approach to the game, the, the way he did it, his court carriage. One of the greatest point guards to ever play the game, uh, toughness, um, hard working. And every time that, that I would play against him, I used to tell my boys, watch the game tonight. I don't care if other games you watch, but you watch John Stockton play. Doesn't care who gets the credit and is just there for the team. That's his sole function out there is to help the team win games. Uh, and that that caliber of unselfishness is, is a, and skills in the same package is, is I think, uh, an incredibly powerful thing that um, it, it'll be a while before the NBA sees that again. Just goes to show you when you have God-given ability, you put it to the maximum of use, uh, you make the best of every situation, you work hard every day, you do what's right, uh, the great things can happen. I think he's a very positive role model for our youth and for other players that are looking to come into the NBA. He's just one of those role models, man. I mean, millions of kids could look at John and say, man, this is, this is a guy I want to be just like. Perfection. You know, he is the Michelangelo of point guards. He makes plays look so easy, but on the other hand, when you have asked some other people to try to do that, that's impossible. There's no question in my mind, if you say one of the top point guards to ever play this game, John Stockton's name is going to be there because uh, uh, he is. And he's proven it. If any guy out there in high school, junior high, wants to play the point guard position, they should try to be like John Stockton. Great player. I mean, a great guy to uh, it's going to be in the Hall of Fame, as everybody know, and, um, you know, uh, I admire him a lot. If you had told me that someday he was going to be a Hall of Famer, or a, uh, an Olympic champion, uh, uh, being, saying the best point guard that ever lived, then I would have said, you're a liar, because nobody knew that. All the cliches, all the trite things you say, uh, they're true about John Stock. He's a better person than he is a player. He plays basketball the way it's supposed to be played, and he's one of those guys who makes his teammates better, and there's not a lot of people you can say that about. I've got to know John, uh, number one, as a man, as a father, as a husband. I consider him a friend, but I got great memories uh, of the best point guard to ever play the game. I'm not sure we'll ever see a guy that has all those attributes, but we hope for the sake of basketball there is, because I think that's what basketball needs, more John Stockton. <laughs>
Hello everyone, I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos, so please subscribe to this page, and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.